If you're encountering the get data from page URL lookup, as seen here in Bubble for the first time, then this video is going to tell you all about it. So let's go ahead and click on this and just see what exactly it gives us for an options panel. So when we go to get data from page URL, it's likely that you have a pretty good idea of what these query string parameters is kind of the official name um, or just parameter for short. You have a, a probably a pretty good idea of what they are and you've seen them in a number of URLs, but maybe you're just unsure of if you should use them in your bubble app or just like what, what good are they for. Um, and really, they're just another way to pass data around between pages, uh, similar to how on the link element, if we check here and we're going to send data, that we can also send data. We could send like the current user's unique ID, for example, or we could send uh, the current user's, uh, in this particular case, uh, yeah, let's go with a, there's a location or something. Um, we can send that, and then we can also send additional ones uh, let's see, send more, this is the one, add another parameter. We could add that here and we could send it. Um, there's a number of ways that this can be done for sending the data. This is one example. We'll look at our workflow just next after this. And what good are these for? Well, they're a lot like custom states where they're these lightweight um, variables that tell, uh, that tell the, the, the system, that tell Bubble, basically a little bit of information about what's going on in the present state of things as a user works their way through an app. Uh, what exactly it, does that mean? Well, I'm gonna give uh, a couple examples here. So let's start out with, uh, there's a very common example that um, if you are making a mobile app, you wanna pay attention to this um, in that navigating or, or building a mobile app in Bubble, ha if you're going to do that, the, the way the technology is set up is that when you wrap it into the thing that, when you wrap it into the technology that uh, works with Apple and works with uh, Google Play, then you are going to be basically entering the URL of one page in Bubble. So you'll have a single page app, but in order to navigate around that, you can either use states to hide and show things, um, but a better way to do that is to use these URL query string parameters, and we're gonna take a look at that here. So uh, I'm just gonna delete this one out. We're gonna look at this from scratch where we're gonna navigate. We're gonna go to a page and the page is going to be this mobile one. And then we're going to send a core string parameter. In our case, nav, uh, again, these come with key value pairs. So it's like, what's the, what's the, uh, the key or the label um, or the field name? And then what's the value of it? Well, in this case, because we clicked on the home button, we want to set home as the query string parameter there. And so if we go over here and preview this, we can see that up here there is uh, there is no query string parameters. But now if we click to the home button and this navigates to the home, if we click classes, we see that update. And of course this only works and we only see a visual update here because we've actually have something going on on the page here uh, that utilizes that. And this is exactly where this git nav uh, or this get data from a page URL can be useful. Again, we're looking at just one example here for starters, and then we'll dive into additional ones because it can be powerful uh, as a way to send data around um, your app. Uh, but you know, it's kind of a supplement, to be honest, uh, for the the link button when or <laughs> link the link link uh, when you are because you can just send exactly the data that you might want to send to a page just directly through this command as well, or also through uh, this data to send when you navigate to a page here. Um, but because we're just kind of making this up, we're using a, a lightweight uh, way to say what's going on with the page. Um, you know, we're not querying the database, so it's a little bit, when I say the word lightweight, what I mean is it's quicker. Okay, so that's that is the mobile example. We're done with that. We're done taking a look at that as an example. We're going to look now at something else that um, you know is useful. Let's say that you're building uh, a landing page. So example number two here, landing page. You have a landing page and you have a phone number on your landing page. So let's go ahead and just add a piece of text up here. 
and I'm going to add 555555555. And then this is, so let's see. Can we spread it out? Much. There we go. That one. Okay. Uh, so this is the number that's on my landing page, and um, if someone comes to it, they can they can call that number. Cool, great. But what about if we have some marketing campaigns and we want to do a little bit of tracking? So you go out there and you get yourself a Google forwarding number from Google Voice, or you you know pay for one of the services that gives you a forwarding number or something like that. And then so you've got these numbers that you can use to track things. Well, let's take a look at a case where. So in the world of marketing, a lot of these UTM, let's go look for, okay, so just a quick search for UTM parameters. Anyone who uh, is familiar with marketing has probably seen these and they are quite glorious. So your analytics software on a website typically uses these to determine and just group traffic and so things are categorized so that you can make sense of, you know, where's your traffic coming from. Um, so let's take a, Let's take um, an example where the UTM source is Google and the UTM medium is CPC, cost per click or you know pay per click type of uh, traffic that's coming to the page. So in this example here, what we are going to do is we're going to pretend that the person came and visited us with uh, another thing just to note for, UT, for UTM, yeah, for every parameter. Uh, is that it's the first one starts with the question mark and then all of the rest of them you could have 10 more and they all start with the ampersand why someone on the internet long ago decided this so nav equals library we're going to say utm medium equals we'll say well utm source equals google and utm medium equals cpc now if we had an analytics software and google analytics is actually on this page you know, it would categorize this traffic as this because it goes out and reads those parameters. But perhaps, let's go get that one with the phone number. Or not. Um, let's go and check and see what, oh, ah, okay. So when I was playing around with this, to show it off, I actually broke it. Um, so let's just back out of that. Oh, let's continue with it because I want that phone number up there. So when it is home, and you can see how to set this up, but there is a video if you're really curious on how to set this up uh, specifically for the, the use case of uh, navigation on a mobile app. There is a video on the channel here. Just search for mobile responsive menu, uh, bubble, and you should be able to find it. Um, but so there are, that's only one use case and here we're considering a second example which is very you know quite different actually than the mobile example because you could have a regular old desktop app here and uh, the example that we're giving would actually apply to that it has nothing to do with mobile we're just yeah, seeing the versatility in this video so uh, what I would like to do here is I'm going to say that when get URL when the parameter of UTM medium is CPC, then I'm going to change this text. Actually, you probably have this as a link, right? You'd have this as a link that with the TEL, where the href is equal to TEL, and then that's, that's the number, so then it's actually clickable. Uh, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. We're just showing off the example. You get it because you can format it, but, but you would know that you could change this to a different phone number. So when that is, uh, oh, and I have a typo here, so that's really great to notice. Uh, glad I caught that. So then now let's go and take a look at this over in the test area. So we can see that that number is 555. Let's bump that font the font up, shall we? And then let's go and add a query string parameter where the UTM medium equals CPC. And then we can see that that updates. So another you know, use case where you can display data um, on 
the page that is uh, dynamic depending on the values here. Now, another potential use case of this is you might have a landing page and it's like, drop your email here, sign up for this trial where the only call to action on the whole page is just an email uh, uh, input. So somebody inputs their email and then they click, yes, sign me up, but you haven't actually signed them up yet. You could store that value in a query string parameter and then you could go and you could get it. So here, um, I, I'm actually, in both of these cases, uh, what I'm doing is I'm using this as a conditional, but I could also just say, Let's click that. I could also just read out the value here. So here is, I'll just say that the nav parameter. Oh, but that's true, so I want to remove that. Um, the other example that I'm giving though is that, okay, so we actually can take that parameter from here and then display the parameter on the page. We don't necessarily have to use it in a conditional like we did here and uh, also like we did uh, here for both of these. But the to finish the thought train on that for the example of if you have a field here, you know, during sign up, you take this uh, this value, you store it up here in a query string parameter, meaning that when uh, someone goes from your landing page where they filled out the call to action with just the input, they inputted their email, then you just take this and you would have put like, I don't know, we don't have an input here, but um, fine, let's go, let's do this, let's show this. Call this input A. Put that there. Then we would say input A's value. We actually can send that, whereas here in these other cases we we're just sending a static value, library profile, whatever. But then, so then on the next page, after if this was a landing page. And if somebody had filled out there, yes, I want you know whatever freebie that you're sending me, but then they have to create an account in the next screen, then let's go with a at b dot com. And if they hit the button, you could send this, the value for this, so that when they go to sign up, they actually, their email is already um, there for them, so they don't have to type it in again. So you can enhance your user experiences with this. So. That is a bit of an intro to using query string parameters and using that get data from the URL. What you're doing with that is you're just simply looking at this, the key value pair again, or the key, the label, the name of the field, if you think about it in terms of database, databases, um, especially for someone new to this world of data, that you have this light weight variable that you can pass around and you can uh, basically, logistically control a few things within your app. So sign up flows, uh, maybe you have a one step, two step, three step, four step sign up flow. Um, and so those are just some of the examples of how you might utilize these. If you found the video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.